morning, everyone. So welcome to you and thank you for joining us today. We're, we're really happy you're here. Um, our work, workshop today is a marketing field guide to manufacturing and packaging. And as I said, we're excited and honored that you chose to spend your valuable time with us this morning. This session is jam packed with industry insights and tips to get you comfortable with selling into one of the top performing industries, the manufacturing industry. My name is Jill Kennedy and I will be hosting you today. This session is being recorded as Sadie mentioned a little bit earlier. And although you've been muted, um, please feel free to use the chat like you've been doing to tell us where you're from um, or the Q&A functions to pose questions as we go. We have Chris Wiedeker with us today. She's gonna be monitoring those chats and she'll be um, you know, sending those questions our way so that uh, we can get those answered for you. We'll also be taking questions after the presentation. So stick around for that if you can. Uh, later today, you're gonna receive a link, like I mentioned, to the recording, along with access to some great sales tools. And we'll be sharing that soon. Um, so I do wanna show, I wanted to show the results of that poll that we took. So it does look like, yep, everybody's got, you know, I have some prospects, but not really sure how to approach. Some of you have several loyal clients, uh, which is great. That was actually number two. So kind of different ends of the spectrum there. And um, I yeah. think you'll all find something valuable um, in what we're talking about today. So glad you're here. All right. Well, I want to get to introduce my panelists here. So um, a little bit more about myself. Um, I've been with Navitur for about 15 years, um, as of this week, actually. <laughs> and I work really closely with our sales and marketing teams, helping develop ideas and materials that support our distributors in their sales efforts. I really consider myself kind of a sidekick to you super sales superheroes out there. And that's really a position I love to be in. So glad to be here. And we are really thrilled to have Sadie Whiting with us today. Sadie is our label expert and she is a solution superstar. So, so how many years has it been now for you, Sadie? It has been, nine, it was 19 in February. So I joke and always say I started when I was two years old here at LabelWorks. So, um, but it, it's a lot of fun. Um, labels, stickers, and decals is, is what I do every day and I enjoy it. And I've, I'm looking forward to this session. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, awesome, thanks. Thanks again, Sadie. And Zach Kessler is joining us. Um, Zach is a packaging specialist. So, and really a phenom when it comes to folded cartons. Uh, thanks Zach so much for being here to lend your expertise today. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Um, I've been, with, been here for about four years, so you could call me the baby of the group. <laughs> um, but I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, stopping by and, and taking a listen at us and um, excited to, to let you guys learn some stuff. Absolutely, sounds good. Thanks Zach. So what can you expect in today's workshop? You know, we're gonna go over the top priorities of, of the manufacturers in the market today, and also the solutions that you can offer to help them reach their goals. So we'll take a deeper dive into that hot packaging market. And we're gonna share the latest from Navator, new products, which we're really excited about, and selling tools, giving you what you need to prospect and grow your revenue. So the manufacturing industry has had quite the roller coaster ride the last few years. You know, the new safety protocols to manage, a changing labor market, those supply chain disruptions that we're all feeling, as well as that rising inflation, which we are also all feeling. Um, and all of this is happening while they're seeing an increase in production demands. So there are many challenges facing this industry, and I wanna hop right into them and, and talk about them. I want you to pay close attention to these priorities as you know, we're going to be bringing them back up again a little bit later. Um, but just like most other industries right now, you know, other than supply chain and inflation, right, attracting and retaining employees is priority number one. When you lack the people and their talent, it's really hard to run a successful business and to meet customer expectations and really to continue to grow. Maybe you've heard of that, that saying the great resignation. Well, it's, it's actually real. Did you know that 68% of employed workers indicate they plan to leave their current job in the next 12 months? 68%, that is according to joblist.com. And on top of that, a survey by Jobvite indicates 30% of new hires will leave within the first 90 days of employment. These statistics really emphasize the importance of proper onboarding of new employees, as well as showing appreciation for existing talent. You know, when employees feel engaged and valued, they are much less, less likely to leave their companies. 
the priority of having a safe and healthy work environment doesn't just mean following OSHA regulations. A healthy work environment also means addressing overall wellness, including physical as well as mental well being, and really placing importance on diversity and inclusion. More and more companies, uh, and I'm sure you're seeing this as well, where you're where you're all working, are adapting new training and policies to address these issues. Driving efficiency, although always important for manufacturers, that takes on a new urgency really as businesses are adjusting to labor shortages and those supply chain disruptions. Manufacturers are needing to do more with less and are modifying their workflows accordingly. They're learning where and how they can be flexible when adjustments need to be made really quickly. So strong relationships, you know, really, whether it's with their customers, with their suppliers, or even with their competitors are proving to be incredibly important as manufacturers navigate through supply chain issues. Now is really not the time to be burning bridges. We need each other. Having trusted partners that can be counted on is really vital to business. It's also important for them, just like for all of us, to keep those communications honest and up to date. Being transparent encourages trust and loyalty, especially during these really quickly changing times. You know, simplifying sales efforts and building brand recognition, those really go hand in hand. Supplying sales teams with the tools they need to communicate their brand effectively is a priority. And making sure that messaging and brand image is consistent across all the channels, from digital to print to packaging and point of sale, solidifies their place in the market. In fact, Forbes estimates that consistent branding can increase revenue up to 23%. So that's pretty important. So, you know, let's take a look at these top printed products that are used by manufacturers. And I want you to think about the priorities. You know, like I just talked about, you know, I wanted you to kind of remember what we were talking about for those priorities. So let's not just look at these products, you know, as, as just items to sell, but really more as solutions to help your clients address their priorities and alleviate those challenges that we just talked about. I'm just going to brainstorm a little bit of ideas, throw out some suggestions for some of e for each of these categories. Um, when we look at signage, you think of outdoor signage, like we show there in the image, um, at banners, yard signs to attract employees at job fairs, or like we did right here at Navator, we flooded the perimeter of our building with yard signs, letting the community know that we were hiring. You, you couldn't miss it. They were everywhere. And it really worked. It drew attention. Brochures and booklets that list employee perks and benefits or DNI policies promote that safe and healthy environment. And used as brochures and sales flyers, they simplify sales efforts and they build that brand recognition. Forms when custom created to fit a business's needs add efficiency, plus a form used as a formal contract strengthens those business relationships. You know, let's go up to the name badges and ID, uh, you know, the name and ID badges up there. They help maintain a safe environment by, uh, by identifying the people who are allowed to be in a building. And banners and decals can build brand recognition when used in sales or trade show environment, you know, but they're also important for promoting safety and efficiency when used on a production floor or in a warehouse. You know, Sadie, I know you've got some great ideas for labels, so we can move on to that. What do you think? Yeah, um, how much time you got? <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I know, I'm um, sure everybody's sick of hearing me talk by now, so you go ahead. <laughs> no, it's just, there's so many things, um, you know, if you're thinking back to those priorities, so like in safety, things like the old, great old faithful hard hat decals is huge, um, whether indoor or outdoor use for that, warning labels, floor decals, as was mentioned, um, you know, when you're talking about efficiency, manufacturers are looking for things like inventory labels, shelving, barcode labels, you know, even blank thermal transfer or direct thermal that they can do their own imprinting to keep it efficient. And then on the sales and the branding side, oh, um, yeah. you know, doing things like business card labels that their employees can use, branded shipping labels to keep their brand right out in front of the customers, or even the actual label that's going on their product that they're manufacturing, um, yeah. just to name a few. And I better stop. I could go on and on, but <laughs> just, there's so many great things. That this, that's why this we have you. That's the label. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And, and when we move on into pr presentation folders, and I know, Zach, you, you've worked with those as well, but we, we're seeing like those, um, to use them um, for onboarding materials, you know, as a beautifully branded presentation folder. I mean, it makes a great first impression when you're looking to attract those initial employees. 
And, and also when you, when you think of retaining employees, we've seen such a huge surge in these beautifully kitted gifted items that folks and that employers are sending to their employees to show their appreciation, um, especially during the pandemic. It's been, it was a huge growth in those types of items. And I really want to bring up one more, um, you know, effective way to help drive efficiency, uh, and that's creating a company e-store where all of these products yeah. that you see can be accessed 24/7 and easily ordered. It saves a ton of administrative time and effort, and it really ensures that those brand standards and that brand integrity. You know, if it's something you're interested in, we can help you with that as well. Just let us know if you'd like to hear more. You can send it in the chat or in the survey afterwards. Um, we can have someone reach out to you and, and talk to you a little bit more about that possibility. Um, and you may be going, oh, Jill, there's packaging there. You didn't mention packaging. That was in the title even, and I, I get it. But you know, really that's <laughs> kind of how I'm saving that to the last so that I have a great segue to, to move into Zach. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Zach. And uh, before I do, I don't know if you all have seen um, printing impressions and their rankings for you know print in the industry, but packaged foods manufacturing um, was rated as the number one industry for print, and that really sounds like a ton of opportunity. So I'm going to turn it over to Zach and let him give you a little bit deeper dive into the packaging. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Jill. Mm -hmm. uh I'm just going to read a couple of those uh, facts right there, the smack dab in the middle. 81% um, of consumers uh, said they have tried something new because of the packaging caught their eye. And then 52% have changed brands from a product they have purchased in the past because of new packaging. Um, as we kind of move along here, you can kind of understand that, you know, shelf appeal is a very big part of, of packaging in general, whether it be folded cartons, so something with enhanced finishes like foil stamping and spot UV and different color combinations and stuff like that, that can really generate um, a shelf appeal that you're looking for. Um, for flexible packaging, it's more about the end-to-end -end print. So not having any limitations on exactly where you need to print. Um, essentially, think of it as a blank billboard, you know, which creates endless possibilities on how you and your customer want to promote the product. Uh, moving on here, commitment to sustainability. Uh, so more and more consumers are being conscientious about the, the materials that they are using. Uh, whether it be a recycled material um, or just how they're some of the different uh, printing <clears throat> processes that you're going through. Um, it's a great way to have a add a different element uh, to what you're offering um, and in return will help drive sales to you. So um, being able to, you know, go into your toolbox and, and have that uh, on your side is, is a good is a good start. Uh, labels, you know, I think Sadie can agree with me that <laughs> Yeah. are a great match. Um, like she said, she could probably go on for about three days um, about talking about <laughs> labels themselves. So, um, yeah. Would you would you say that's about right, Sadie? Like you said, three three to five. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> three to five business days. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Estimated. <laughs> <laughs> um, so QR codes. Uh, this is a great way to increase brand engagement. I'm sure since the pandemic started, you've gone to a restaurant and and seeing the barcodes on the tables and you've scanned it, um, brought you to the menu or something like that. You know, these can be used in so many different ways. They're essentially just little digital universes that you can go to, mm -hmm. like a company website, they can bring you to social media sites, blogs, presentation videos, podcasts. I mean, the list goes on and on on how you want to create a, a brand impression um, and, and, and increase the engagement between you and the consumer. So increasing product satisfaction and brand trust, you know, you got tamper seals, zipper closures, and tear notches. Uh, these are things you can use to ensure your products inside are safe uh, and fresh. So essentially a good example would be, do not use if the seal is broken, um, or you probably wouldn't use a box if it's torn at the notches. You might dig a little farther back to find a good box. That's uh, there, so <laughs> of, of, that. of product satisfaction. And, and protection is, is important. I can get into protection a little bit later. Uh, barcodes, you know, these can help monitor logistics such as uh, production dates and, and inventory. Um, you know, getting that data, you know, quickly and being able to, to make moves as you need to is really a, a great way to be uh, successful. Um, you know, acting as protected, you know, outside of just being a home for products, uh, I think we can agree that ever since the pandemic started again, um, there's been an uptick in online shopping. I've done it myself. 
Um, and this, what this leads to is the need for, uh, you know, protective packaging, whether it is, you know, a flexible package holding something or, or a folded card and holding something, the, the product is getting shipped in something, but inside is what really matters and getting it to your house in a safe uh, and orderly manner is important. Um, so making sure you choose the right materials for that, um, you know, is, is one step. Uh, variable printing, you know, this is more of a most cost-effective option for different styles. So being able to customize from design to design, you know, I like to use the example of, you know, a Dayquil and NyQuil. Um, you know, they're essentially the same box and, and product, but there's different coloring, uh, different branding uh, and stuff like that. So what we do is run it on one run as opposed to separate runs. And you get a lot of cost savings uh, there. And then you can also do from, uh, you know, one box to the next. It doesn't have to be, you know, 500 of one, 500 of the other. Um, it's a great way to, to spice up the um, customization. So moving forward here, um, starting up, you know, where do you go? Who do you target? Um, one thing, again, you know, the pandemic has, has played a major role in our society. And I think um, with that came a lot of small startup businesses, entrepreneurs. Uh, my girlfriend's uh, best friend, started her own crocheting business and needs different types of products in order to help <clears throat> um, package them correctly and then present them to the consumers. Um, so they're a great resource. And it might just be as simple as a Google search. Chambers of Commerce, uh, you know, reach out to see if they have any business leads for packaging. You know, they're a great organization that helps promote business uh, and could be a great resource in finding leads. Um, Co-packers, uh, this is a different one. You know, these are different manufacturing companies that essentially focus on packaging the product uh, into the package. Um, maybe you see like a, 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 a conveyor belt with, with all these boxes and then they're either manually or a robot is inserting the product into the box. And, you know, they may be interested in either, you know, providing an actual packaging solution themselves or relaying you some of the business that they're working with um, in order to give you some leads in that aspect. Graphic designers is another one. Uh, this can be one that another Google search. Um, you can get a lot, of, these guys get a lot of leads from companies who are looking for design for boxes or flexible packaging. And for them to be able to give you a solution for printing, say, hey, I can design this and then I have someone to print this for you as well. Um, that's another great tool in the toolbox. And I've used that metaphor a lot, but it really is um, to have that and, and, and really gives trust and and not only the graphic designer and you, but also um, the consumer um, reaching out to the uh, graphic designer as well. Finally, uh, current customers of yours. Uh, a company of customer of yours maybe have one solution for packaging, um, but maybe looking uh, for a new home for uh, a new, a new pack, uh, product, whether it be a folded carton or flexible package. Um, they may be doing packaging something in, in like a plastic and they wanna switch over to a uh, folded carton or flexible packaging to, for presentation purposes. Um, there's plenty of different reasons why. So maybe even starting within your own customer base would be a great, great way to start. So when you reach out to these people, you know, what are the right questions to ask? Um, what is the product? Typical run sizes are some good questions. This kind of helps you figure out the type of material you use, um, some of the dimensions you're needed. Um, it gets an idea for, and also gets an idea for what type of run is it, it's going to be. Is it going to be a large run, you know, 50,000 one time a year, or is it going to be, you know, 10,000 four times a year, or is it going to be a small market run for testing? Maybe they want to test the product in a grocery store and see how it sells first. And um, so you can kind of get that understanding uh, when you're going through uh, these high level questions with them. Do they want consistent branding? Um, Jill, I know we've mm -hmm. talked about this before, our G7 uh, mm -hmm. certified, that helps with the consistent branding among you know, colors and, and different things like that. So making sure that they wanna be consistent with that type of thing is, is important mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, yeah, um, that's a big thing I know. For, right. We talk about the importance of brand awareness and all of that. I mean, that was one of the priorities that really speaks to that and um, the G7 capabilities makes a, makes a big difference. Absolutely. Um, moving on. You know, what are your priorities for the package is a question you might want to ask. And what image are you looking to convey while on the shelf? Um, are they looking for protection and safety of the product? Are they looking for a visual impact and shelf appeal um, or ease of use? Or is it a combination of both or maybe even all three? 
you know, these are things that, that will give you an idea of kind of what, what you need to uh, portray to um, a printer like us and, and kind of help up so we can help, you know, um, get, move this, move it along for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and knowing that we are here too, um, you know, uh, as a as a source. I mean, you know, you don't need to know everything, right? I mean, right. that's what we're here for mm -hmm. is is to be that source, to be that that expert for for you all, um, so that you you know just knowing these basic questions, I think, and then um, you know handing it over to us, and we can certainly help. Yeah, it leads me into my final portion here. Uh, the case. <laughs> awesome. The uh, perfect setup. <laughs> Um, so just real quick, I'll finish up by with a little story. I had a customer come to me a, a while ago who was looking to produce 19 different versions, which is where the variable printing would come into play. Um, but they're also looking for um, a, a coating that would um, the, a foil would a foil sample would adhere to, and they're having a hard time finding a, a manufacturer who could produce these. And we reached out to our R and D team, um, asked some questions, did some testing. Um, and we we're able to actually find a solution for the coating and, and the foil to adhere properly to the package. Um, and, and in return, by doing the variable printing and finding the right coating, we actually saved them nearly 90% projected cost, um, which is outstanding. Um, and that just really goes to show you that, you know, we're the experts here, so you guys don't have to be. Um, use us as a resource. Uh, we're here to help and, and make sure that you, um, you guys can be successful. Um, in the end, we got rewarded with three larger products, and they're still a great client of ours today. Um, so awesome. taking things I said into consideration, uh, say is going to bring you down the road of what Navator.com has to offer, uh, as well as take a little deeper dive into labels and the flexible packaging side of things. So Sadie, uh, go ahead and, and take it away. Thanks, Zach. Um, saw a poll pop up a minute ago here. Do we have results coming in I on that? Do, I do. I'll share those results right now. So Ooh, yeah, wow, we're interesting, isn't it? Um, yeah, so it's kind of both ends of the spectrum again. Yes, I you know hear a lot about packaging, and you know my customers haven't approached me yet, so we're we're kind of covering both ends there. Yeah, and you know one of the things I guess it's kind of my keyword when it comes to encouraging people in looking at products that you may not offer your customers today, and one of it is just simply awareness. If you just let your customers know that you can help them with those kind of things. Um, you'd be surprised how many people will be like, oh, I never thought of you for that. So that that's a really great, that poll is interesting because like you said, it's on both ends of the spectrum, but yep. always opportunity there in both ways. Yep, yep, uh, exactly. So, so we'll dive into um, the, a little bit more about the packaging, as Zach mentioned. So on top of everything already that Navator helps you with on both the print and the promo side, put this one down uh, on your can-do list now. Um, what we're talking about is of course packaging, which is now available on Navator.com. Um, I had actually a customer when this got released out there, it was the next morning. She emailed me and she was like, what is this? What is this? And so, I mean, it's exciting. And she noticed that right away out there. So if you haven't checked that out, I would definitely uh, encourage you to do that because it's really for easy ordering and there's, there's great options out there to look through. So a quick question for you is before we jump into more about flexible packaging, did you also know that Navator can help you with the things you see here, such as the wrapping paper, um, hang tags, shipping envelopes. And again, back to that whole awareness thing, really think about all of the customers that you work with, the ones that probably utilize things like this every single day in their day-to-day, -day, the way that they make their business run um, and the tools that they use, but they just have never thought to ask you for it. They just didn't think about that. Um, so check them out on avatar.com to get some ideas and then go out to your customer base and just make them aware of them today. So it, it's really a great opportunity if you're not already familiar with these. So as Zach has covered for us in an awesome way, let's look at some of these um, packaging solutions or like I call them the dynamic duo or like it says there, the peas and carrots. Um, they really go together so well. Um, my recommendation here, it would be don't just sell one or the other, really sell the whole kit, the whole combination. Um, we're looking at, you know, you're saying customers, businesses, and you might ask, okay, do they use labels? Do they use cartons today? Do they use packaging? Maybe they're just coming to you for a business card today, but look a little bit deeper into what kind of customer is that? And do they actually manufacture, like we're talking about today, a product? And what do they put that product in? How do they label that product? All of those kinds of questions. Uh, some of our most popular offerings are available on Navitor.com, but also understand when you're out there browsing through, you know, we know that this is also a very specialized product sometimes. 
And so we make it easy to sell either way there. So you, you can offer your customer, you know, some of the more popular that are out there on Navitor.com, or you can reach out to us to help on customer solutions, uh, custom solutions as well. So, all right, so let's dive a little bit deeper into the big new latest one, which is flexible packaging line. So you might say, okay, what's the big deal about this? You know, um, my answer would be next time you're out in any kind of a retail or manufacturing environment, when you're out and about, take a look at how many times you're going to see flexible packaging, which is probably going to be a lot now after this session, because it's going to be on your brain. <laughs> um, but manufacturers are really turning to this a lot these days um, for several reasons. One is for efficiencies. And also, as Zach had mentioned earlier, some of the protection qualities. It uh, has an airtight seal. It's a strong barrier protection. It's actually earth friendly because it's 60% less plastic and it's gonna be lighter than some of the rigid packaging. And so in turn, that means it reduces carbon emissions in both the production as well as transporting it, which obviously keeping all of those costs low are so important. Flexible packaging also allows for really endless options when it comes to decorating because the advertiser can take and maximize all of that space when this is sitting on a shelf or hanging on a hook it's gonna be all important shelf appeal is really what catches the eye. Like those stats that Zach shared about, hey, this many people said, if I, they caught my eye and I changed products or I bought this because of the packaging. So really that shelf appeal is so important. And um, I'm a mom of young kids. So I would say for me, I love flexible packaging because it's easy to grab on the go and it can reseal <laughs> oftentimes mm -hmm. if you have that resealable option. Um, so it's something you can take on the go. So I appreciate it for that. <laughs> Doesn't always mean it's going to keep a mess off my floor. <laughs> yeah, or the car <laughs> or the... <laughs> right, right. Um, so there's a lot of different types of flexible packaging in the industry. Uh, so we wanted to highlight the two that we're currently offering, which are some of the popular styles. You're probably familiar with these as we get into them here. The first one I want to highlight is the lay flat, which you're going to see on the right side. This is going to, you're going to think about this for like single serve beverages, say teas or coffees, um, things like spices, dry mixes, as well as treats and snacks. I've also seen it used in, you know, samples like of health items or beauty items, things like that. And it's great for product testing or launches. Um, so it's just a really a nice little convenient pouch. And the other thing is the stand up is the other one that we have. This one's going to be more for if you want to put something in that's going to stand on a shelf. So it's got gussets along the bottom, things like insect and pest control, you know, cleaners, pet treats, specialty items, all kinds of things, food items, like we mentioned, organic growers and health food companies are, are really big users of this, but it's not just in those markets. It's really all kinds. So like we said, look at all the manufacturing um, possibilities, and, and this is going to be a big one there. Um, as far as materials, we do offer clear, white, and silver in these. The silver is going to give you that metalized option. And we have for features, things like the zipper closer, which like I said, I love, um, tear notches, hang holes, things like that. And as mentioned um, earlier, we're talking about, you know, safety is such a key thing. And all of our pouches are food safe certified. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So if you do, that's what's well, always usually a big question when customers first start talking about this. So we are able to offer that. When it gets to uh, the big question of what's the minimum quantities, what's your quantity sweet spot look like? We offer a minimum quantity, usually coming in at about 2,500 units. And then our sweet spot really sits around the 20,000 quantity range. So what I would like to say is, you know, regardless if you have a client that wants to buy that minimum, but maybe they're very small right now. So they're gonna just hand pack them as they need them. That's an option, buy that 2,500, maybe they only need it in batches of 200. They can hand pack those along the way. Or maybe you have a larger client and they're gonna hire a co-packer for larger production runs. We can help really on either side of that. So uh, what I really kind of wrapping this up, what I would suggest is that you check out Navitor.com, browse through some of those options, and then feel free to reach out to us. We have physical samples. We have sales tools developed, really all kinds of uh, further information that's going to make selling this easy for you. And I'm going to let Jill kind of show some of those um, before I just spill all the beans on the sales tools. Yeah. I'll let Jill take that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we're really excited about this. I mean, we've our uh, marketing team has been just working diligently yeah. on um, materials to support all of these efforts. So materials surrounding the, the manufacturing and packaging, the manufacturing part of it, as well as around the packaging. So just want to quick give you a, a tour. And I know we're kind of at time. So um, if you need to go, um, thanks for stopping by. But just know that we are recording this and I'll continue on and show you some of this, these, these great materials. If you can stay, great. But otherwise, we'll be recording it so you won't miss it. Um, so I'm just going to start with the manufacturing um, and packaging sales tools. Um, 
we actually created a landing page to house materials for you. Um, we'll be sharing all these links with you and so on. So you can see some of these, uh, the examples of some of these great things. So we do have this wonderful brochure that's been created that can be used with your end customers. This is really, it has a lot of the content in it that we were talking about today. So you can see, uh, I know there's some questions about some of the statistics, a lot of that is in here, um, a lot of the tips, a lot of the uh, priorities and how uh, the different products can be used and so on. So it's a beautiful booklet, it's available um, electronically um, and we can, uh, you can, like I said, you can send it out to your customers and, um, and um, you know, to encourage, to encourage those sales. Um, we also include like a social media toolkit uh, which would have suggestions for social media posts. This will be a download of a PowerPoint. You can pull images off of it that you can pop into your LinkedIn, your, your Facebook, et cetera, Instagram, whatever, um, along with some um, suggestions for copy that you can use. We have a blog created. So it's again, full of tons of information so that you can be prepared before you go out and start selling into this manufacturing market. We even uh, include images of some of the products, like some of those great images you saw throughout the, the presentation that you can just pull down. You can use them on your own website. You can uh, use them in your own marketing materials. You can use them for social. So just um, a really great um, uh, way to, to get this, the word out and so on. So, we, you know, we wanna be here to help you. We're your partner here in this. Uh, then when we get to packaging solutions, this is pretty exciting because this is, this is new for us, but we do have a landing page for that as well. And you'll find very much the same types of things. You're gonna find um, like social media toolkits, case studies, blog, um, this dollop. You may be saying, what the heck is a dollop? I don't understand what a dollop is. <laughs> well, that one didn't open. I should open it in this one. I think it'll open here. It downloaded. This one will open for you, but this is a dollop. This is what we call a dollop. It's just like a little sliver of industry information that we've collected and put into this document that you can use to prepare before you go out and, and hit the streets with sales. So the major priorities, those top print products for this one, um, we talked about some of those sources. Um, these are all right in here and listed. Um, again, action steps, that, that type of thing. So really some, some fantastic materials out there um, for you to access. This I wanna showcase really quickly is this mini catalog. Um, again, this is an end customer facing uh, item so you can um, use this with your end customers, but it's just a beautiful booklet that um, has been created to talk about the flexible packaging that, that Sadie just mentioned. We have the folded cartons um, all throughout here. It's just this beautiful booklet. Again, this is available electronically. Um, I wanna go back. Oh, that's where I was with the packaging solutions. Um, so we did cover, again, the blog, we have case studies, you can see the one Zach just talked about right there, uh, a social media toolkit, and we've even developed um, suggested emails that you can use that we'll be sharing with you. So we've put together suggested subject lines, the content to put in the email, so really the complete package for you to promote to your customers, which is really exciting. But then I do want to show you, let me just make sure I can get into the right, uh, uh, the right uh, tab here, but at Navator.com, we talked about how now this flexible packaging is available on Navator.com right there. Um, and if you click into it, you'll be able to view um, more information about each of those different products, the flexible pouches, the folder cart, folded cartons, and so on. So it's all right there in one place. You can learn a little bit more. You can learn about the sizes that are available, the different types of pouches that are available, et cetera, um, right in there. And then you're actually able to build and price the product right from Navator.com. We also offer those templates so that you can have your graphic designer create them and then just be able to just pop them right into Navator.com and go. Um, when you go to build and price this product, just remember that we are a reseller organization. So um, we only sell to those who resell our products. So this will only be available on Navator.com to those that are members of Navator. So once you log into Navator.com, then you'll be able to go in, price out your products and so on, and you'll be ready to go. So I know that was a bit of a, a whirlwind um, to go through all of these items, but we were really excited to, to show this off to you all. And um, 
we'd love to take any questions if anybody if anybody has anything. I don't know, Sadie or Zach, do you have anything to add about well, well what uh, those materials that we have available? Go ahead, Zach. I want to jump in here. Yeah, I was just going to say I think it's a great uh, opportunity for um, for you to to add it to your product offering. Uh, flexible packaging is is a great tool. Uh, you probably see it everywhere, you know, like we talked about when you walk through the stores on the sh shelves and being able to have a provider that can that can print something like that is, is um, I, I'll go back to it, a great tool in your toolbox. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but but it, it is, it is, and it's exciting, and, and there's a lot of different things you can do with it um, to not only help help you, but help your customers as well be successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's really important to us at Navator to be that partner you know, to, to, you know, to offer all of these items to you so that, you know, to really help you in your sales efforts. So, I mean, that's, that's a big priority for us here at Navitar, speaking of priorities. And, you know, the thing is too, we've gone over so much information that it can be a little bit overwhelming if it's not a product that you currently sell into. But if you take anything away from this today, take away the fact that you are not out there selling this alone, you have the whole Navitor team to support you. So you can, you know, call us up and go over information, get samples, help, have us help you through those conversations and really make it easy to sell, which is the ultimate goal and help you grow. So it, it's not, you know, flexible packaging. It looks so cool. And there's all these questions to get to it, but it's not, it's not really intimidating when you look at the fact that you've got a whole support system behind you to make it happen. So it's really right. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. You did have a question like, come in there, Joe. Yeah, I see that. I, I was just, I was just taking a look. I, I noticed that um, Bob had a had a mention about that he's got a, a folder opportunity or a folding box opportunity. So Zach, I'm assuming um, Bob, if you're not, I'm not sure if you're still on, but we'll get your contact information. I'm sure um, we'll be reaching out and and uh, talking to you about that. Oh yeah, Zach, you did mention. Oh, I'm a little behind. Um, <laughs> and where are those online brochures? So we will be sharing the link with you. So uh, watch for your emails a little bit later today. We'll send a copy of this presentation. Um, the slide deck will also send links to those landing pages I just showed you, and you'll have access to those online um, uh, sales flyers and all of those sales tools will be right there within those links. Um, everything will be sent to you. That's one of the benefits of joining us. <laughs> you know, you get all this great stuff um, when, when, you're, when we're done. So uh, let's see here. Is the flexible packaging mainly for the smaller manufacturers? I would think the larger companies would use material that they fill and seal um, with automation. I think it varies, doesn't it, Sadie, a little bit? I mean, yeah. really, we kind of see all, all across the board. Yeah, you're gonna see, so, you know, you'll, you'll see small manufacturers that maybe are startup companies might do things that would be a little bit more on the manual side, uh, or you're gonna see people that are doing it once they get up and growing, obviously that's not feasible anymore. So they're gonna, they're gonna move to those automated uh, things. And even if it's, if it's flexible packaging or labels, whatever the case is, we can help with understanding of whichever solution that they need that best fits, whether that's that automation side and they need it to be, you know, machine applied, machine filled. A lot of those co-packers are going to have that because that's what they do. It, it's their specialty. Um, and then some of them, like I said, that maybe aren't even to the point of working with a co-packer yet. They're just kind of doing it all at home or on their small shop at this point. Either way, we can really help. And, and like I mentioned, it really ranges from that 2,500 quantity up into the thousands and thousands. So it really, you might uh, run into either one of those, Linda, when you're out actually looking at custom possibilities. So we can help. And I'm side. assuming even larger, yeah, even larger companies, I'm guessing, would have maybe different, maybe they do smaller batches of something. You know, maybe it's a right. test or a trial or, you know, they want to get something out into the marketplace to just, you know, test it and see how it goes. Yeah. So then they may need smaller quantities. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Like a limited release type thing or even a regional test if they're not wanting to release it nationwide or, or some of those. But um, yeah, even if, you know, sometimes people will say, I'm not going to get into this because I know there's big corporations and they'll name some of the biggest brands out there. And, and they'll be like, I'm just going to cross this off. I'm not selling this because I can't compete. That don't, don't be shy. Don't shy away from it just because of that. Um, there's so much opportunity in so many ways. Like I said, look at your customer base. And, and look at which of them actually produce a product. And those are all opportunities. You know, you don't have to worry about, you know, maybe they're too big for me or, or too small. We can really take care of it either way. So it's, it's yeah. an open we, deal. We, yeah, we use the example a lot, or at least I think of the example a lot. We have a small town or our hometown success story 
um, was Angie's Kettle Corn. Yeah, started out in their garage, and I don't know how many of you see Angie's Kettle Corn now on your on your grocery store shelves, but yeah. you know, that was a company that you know kind of started small and small batches and that type of thing, and then grew. I mean, this is different, you know, maybe different type of packaging, but it's the same type of concept of yeah. that small can really grow. And then if you can get with them on the ground floor like that you know, that's, that means lots of business in other ways too. Yeah. So and you know what, yeah. what's neat about that, Jill, is that one, I remember back in the day when they used to apply a label, it was like a blue label mm -hmm. to the outside of just a clear yep. bag of popcorn. And that was where it started. Mm -hmm. And it was just all manual. And then it, they grew to where they started actually yep. printing on the bags, but it was still just the clear bags that you get at sports events. And then it just moved into, yeah, now I see it at Sam's club or local grocery stores down here, even in Kentucky. So it's just a neat story. And that's really, you never want to shy away from any opportunity, regardless of the size, because you never know where it's going to go for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. And then to, to bring a little bit about, I was going to ask about, um, about like floor decals and stuff. I mean, we were talking about manufacturing and the importance of, of safety and, um, you know, efficiency and all of that. And floor decals were huge for safety, right? When yeah. we were um, through the pandemic and everything. And I don't know, Sadie, are, are you still seeing, um, you know, a, an uptick in that? Or what are we, what are we seeing with floor decals these days? Yeah, that's an interesting one. So Actually, we carry um, some stock floor decals that have some of the messaging that was really prominent in 2020, um, which we all know what happened in 2020. So it was all of the, the messaging of, you know, social distancing and all of that. And so we have some of those still available. So if you have manufacturer clients that are still practicing any of those and do want that messaging, that's something we have in stock. On the flip side, what I've personally seen a lot of too, um, kind of piggybacking with that and being able to offer out there is customized, custom printed ones. Mm -hmm. um, and Avatar can help regardless if it's a really small run, like they just need five, or it's one that they need 250 or a thousand or whatever the case is. So what I'm seeing is people are, are really using floor decals just as much as ever. I think what happened through COVID was that product was really a highlight because it was everywhere. And I don't anticipate that's going to go away. I think just the messaging is now changing. So now it, it's, yeah. you know, you're using it, like you said, Jill, um, in safety, people are using it to continue on putting, bringing in a nice warmer environment, putting those safety reminders out on the floor right in front of their employees. Or if it's a business and they've got customers coming in and they're selling products, they're trying to just make a warm shopping environment. So really that floor decal concept is still happening. It's mm -hmm. just now people are moving to more like, I want to customize it now. I want to put my logo on it. I want to make it brand friendly. I want Fun. to, you know, yeah. build some morale. Yeah. So it's still there. It's just that the messaging is changing. And I think people have utilized it so much throughout the last couple of years, they're still going to utilize it. They're just changing the messaging, but it's still sure. a great, great option. So if you haven't checked those out, that's also available on Navator.com yeah. too. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Danny. Yeah, Zach, mm -hmm. I was going to ask you about, um, I know you have so much experience with the folded cartons and so on. What kind of industries, uh, you know, I know like cannabis was really big for a while for, for packaging and for folded cartons. And are you seeing any changes in requests or in, you know, where this is pos you know, popular or what kind of industries maybe we're seeing a surge in there? Um, so, you know, obviously, uh, like you said, cannabis and CBD are probably they take the cake on uh, the most popular for folded carton that we see. Mm -hmm. um, have stuff out there like cosmetology and, and makeup and, and, and essential oils and um, nutraceuticals is another one. So maybe if you see like a GMC that has um, a box holding vitamins or something along those lines, um, we, we've seen a lot of those as well. Uh, the retail space is another big one. Um, you know, there's just, just a bunch of different uh, options out there, even, even uh, office, you know, in, in office, you know, so you got pencil holders, pen holders, <laughs> um, business boxes, uh, different things like that. So, um, you know, really it's everywhere, but the majority of it that I'm seeing is, is the cannabis and, and CBD. Uh, and then probably number two would be uh, the, the makeup industry. Yeah. Um, along with co cosmetology and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, so. that industry uh, kind of surged during the pandemic too. I know people yeah. on social media and all of the, you know, just really getting all <laughs> of that out there has, has made yeah. that industry go crazy. I have a daughter in it, so I'm, I'm familiar, I guess. <laughs> awesome. Well, gosh, you guys, it's it's 1045. And I just really want to thank everybody for joining us. Thank you, Sadie. Thank you, Zach, for, yeah. you know, yeah. 
jumping on with me today. I appreciate it so much. And um, like I said, we'll be following up with you all um, with materials. You'll be getting an email from us. It'll be chock full of just tons of great stuff. So I'll be watching for that. And then also watch, um, follow, you know, if you, if you sign up for our newsletter, you'll be sure to be getting announcements about future webinars that will be happening and other things that are going on within Navator. And I, I encourage you to do that so that um, you can kind of keep on top of what's, what's happening here and can join us again in the future. And we'd appreciate it. All right. Definitely. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. And we'll uh, see you thanks, next guys. time. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.